Hello everybody and welcome to a review of Manjaro Linux 1512 KDE version. Now, it's been a while since I've done the review. I am still using Manjaro GNOME Edition that I did um, a video on quite a while ago. Um, but I'm starting to get the itch to maybe switch to KDE Plasma now that it's had time to kind of bake out some of the bugs and get them squashed. So I decided today um, that I would download the, the ISO and put it on the live USB and install it. Now today is Easter Sunday, so it's the 27th of March 2016 and this version of KDE, which is the only one that you can download from Manjaro, was released on the 23rd of December 2015 and they are currently still working on um, bringing out the 1606 version, so it's going to be a little while I would imagine. Now just to make something clear, this is the only version that you can get with KDE. This is eight pages into the Manjaro blog. As we go down we can see lots and lots of others have been released more recently and in fact we've got some of these ones that were released in March. LXQT, but the flagship, the, the XFCE and the KDE ones, nothing that you can get your hands on yet. Now why is that a problem? Well the ISO is nearly two gigabytes, one, one and a half to two gigabytes to download. So I downloaded it, I installed the ISO, and straight away there were 547 updates to apply. It might not sound like much, but it was nearly one and a half to two gigabytes of stuff to download again. So what is the point of using the ISO in the first place? You're more or less replacing everything that was on it. And that was while it was still compressed. It was four, four and a half gigabytes when it was uncompressed, which to me just seems like a heck of a lot of stuff. And if the community editions are able to bring out versions sooner, I, I wish that the main flagship editions would do so because expecting someone to download that much stuff straight away is, is a bit ridiculous. I know that it's a rolling desktop and things are going to change, but it was almost every single package on the system. Now, getting into the actual review itself, Plasma 5.5, I quite like it. I'm willing to learn its little niggles and I've, I've played around with it for a little while I've been into the settings and I've changed the theme to a dark theme and for the most part it looks pretty good here's Dolphin um, we can go into all of these and you know, normal folder so there's nothing on here, it's just a very basic machine, it is running on bare metal, it's not a virtual machine and I've also installed the Nvidia driver as well um, the the Nuvo driver was okay, but sometimes there was some screen tearing and things flickering and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the first thing I did was install all the updates, and I thought, okay, we must have a fairly s uh, stable machine now. I did have to reinstall all the GPG keys, which I've I constantly have that problem with Manjaro. Every time you seem to update, so you seem to install if it's a f if it's an older ISO, you have to then manually change all of the GPG keys, which is a bit of a pain um, and I can never remember how it's done because with it being a rolling release I hardly ever reinstall but to do it you're looking for a command that I don't have on here Oops. well I'll put it in the description once I find it um, and it will just download the latest keys and then install them and then you should be fine to use it I've had this problem on the GNOME version as well because it used to be a really old version um, but that was a community edition and I could kind of forgive that but there you go um, so yeah, I installed it. It came with kernel 4.1 and straight away once all the updates had gone in it, I got a warning saying that kernel 4.4 was the recommended version which I've um, updated to and restarted and everything seems to be okay but there are a few little niggles. Um, <coughs> if we just find some info on this, um, here we go, info center. Here you can see we're using KDE Plasma 5.5.5 and KDE Plasma 5.6 came out last week but at the moment it's not in any of the repositories so can't get hold of it. It is in the testing one but I don't really want to mess about with that myself. Um, you can see I've updated the kernel and I'm using the 64-bit machine. Now a couple of weird bugs before I go on. Firstly, when I click this icon here to launch Dolphin, the first five or six times I did it, it crashed the entire machine. It froze completely. I couldn't get into a command shell, could not do anything. I had to manually reboot the, the system. Um, and that did it every single time. But going into the menu and clicking File Manager brought up Dolphin. And after that, that bug 
seems to have disappeared so I'm not quite sure what happened there but it was quite annoying um, uh, one of the things that I quite like about this um, I've mentioned before in my GNOME um, review that Manjaro have their own settings now in GNOME you have to type in Manjaro settings in KDE you should go to system settings and at the top of the main settings dialog here there are the Manjaro specific ones. Now they do the same thing that they did in GNOME but I quite like them. You want to update your kernel click there, you've got all the available kernels, whether or not they're LTS's and you can see I've installed that one I've still got this one installed and from the grub menu I can select to boot back into that if something had gone wrong and back hardware detection here, you can see it's detected what I've got in my machine I clicked auto install proprietary driver and it just did it itself no problem it took less than a minute it was really good and I haven't really had to use any of these other Manjaro specific things so I'm not going to get into that now one of the things that quite a lot of people like at the moment is to switch to a dark theme and the way to do that is fairly easy click on workspace theme and look and feel desktop theme here yeah, and we can click breeze dark which is what I've currently got the default is this Maya which I'll apply and show you see we get this green line here the, the icons are slightly different um, it's not that much of a difference to be honest but things like dolphin come up really quite bright um, a bit too white for my taste so I quite like the breeze dark theme so apply that and if we just come out of this and go back into it should give it yeah there we go um, icons I'm using the breeze icons as well and this one here is something people often miss if we go to applications tower and GTK I've also set these to breeze dark as well now that you can only do that in plasma 5.5 I believe I don't think you can do it in plasma 5.4 you definitely can't do it in plasma 5.3 um, <clears throat> now one thing that I have noticed even though I've applied this dark theme and I think this might have been corrected in Plasma 5.6 but I'm not sure is if we go down to things like desktop settings and we click on a drop down you can see it's n nice and white but so is the text and I actually have to highlight it to be able to actually see it okay here as well it cannot actually read any of that which is a bit of a problem another one that I saw that was a bit of a problem when I went into LibreOffice I'm sitting pretty close to the screen, very close to the screen, and I still can't tell what those buttons are. Okay, print, print preview. That I can't see at all. That is just a grey square. Okay, I can kind of see the save disk icon there. I can't see anything here. And that's my face is about 10 centimetres away from the screen, but 3 4 inches. Still can't see it, can't see any of this, which is a bit of a problem, really, because. Breeze Dark is one of the main um, themes that comes with KDE. It comes with pretty much all KDE 5.5 installations, so I think things like that might have been sorted out. Now, back to Manjaro specific things. Um, one thing that jumps out at me immediately is how much I really don't like this menu. I want to like it. It is a fancy thing, and I know before people say I know that you can change it, but it might not be as big an issue on some other distros. Manjaro, my god, do they stick a lot of crap in here. I mean, education, not much in there. Okay, fair enough. Um, let's go back. Development, loads of things in there. Not personally things that I'm going to use, but other people might use. Okay, Games, Steam, and that's it. Okay. Nice, seems to be fairly lightweight. Internet, a lot of stuff, things that I don't even know what it is, don't know why it needs to be added, and to be honest, anyone that wanted it should really be able to download it from Pac-Man. I can't really see why some of this, I know the the K ones are part of KDE, but some of these just seem to be here for no real reason, and if someone really wanted it, they would be able to install it themselves. Multimedia, a few little things in there. Um, I'm not quite sure why Design and VLC, but it's not really... Um, obvious office again loads of things ok ok we've got LibreOffice fair enough a lot of things come with that now but lots of other things KDE software and loads of things that I don't think a lot of people need 
and could have installed themselves. Just so it's a bit of a waste. Utilities, yeah, normal things in there. USB key right is quite a nice addition there from OpenSUSE. Oh, this menu is so annoying. Settings, assistant. Again, quite a lot in there, but fairly important ones. It's just, I think it was more the internet one that annoyed me. I expected to click on it and find Firefox, maybe a couple of a, other items, you know, IRC chat, stuff like that, and it was just full of things that I don't want. And one thing that does annoy me a bit about Manjaro, it's, it's, it's Arch as well. If I, if I want to remove a package, so if I go to, oh, if I go to add remove software, as far as I'm aware, there is no easy way to find out what I've got installed. So if I want to, apart from looking through this list of every single package, which I really don't want to do, if I go to the menu, I would have to sit and go through every single one of these to try and find packages. And ugh, It's just annoying. They, they, they put so much in there, and then I find I spend time going in and having to remove everything. It's just annoying. Um, KD itself fairly good. I've had a couple of freezes like I said um, but for the most part it's been pretty nice. I quite like some of the widgets It's it feels fairly responsive um, I'm recording now and we can see uh, here if I just add a widget here find one that lets me see my disk usage and s what's this CPU? No can see so we're using 1.9 gigabytes of RAM I've not got I didn't bother with a swap partition so 1.9 gigs of RAM nothing's really running well I am recording the desktop um, and there's 12 gigs of RAM in this machine so there's plenty to go around it's very snappy the CPU's not extensively high considering I'm recording the desktop but I'm not doing anything nothing else is running so yeah, if we load Firefox see that shot up a little bit. Um, let me put it off this. It's still staying around the 50% mark, so that's not bad. So yeah, the widgets are quite nice, quite like them. I also like the fact that you can just stick them up here now. In the t well, you've maybe always been able to do that. That is the worst example ever. Um, Let's just remove that one. This one up here, I dragged in. Uh, it was a huge desktop widget, and I've dragged it in there, and it's quite nice and easy to see. System load viewer. Um, I like how easy it is to move some of this around. This, when you first get this, it's on the um, on the bottom of the screen. Panel options panel settings so usually it would be down here and it's usually a bit bigger as well I think it's about that big when you first get it um, which is a bit too big for me so I like it a little bit smaller right, and I quite like it at the top because I've got used to that with GNOME um, so other than that it's it's okay it's a bit buggy for me and I'm not sure if that's uh, Manjaro thing or if that's a um, KDE thing so I think what I'm going to do is try and install Kubuntu um, 15.10 but I know that there's a way of installing Plasma 5.6 on that so I might run that for a little bit and just see if I find it's more stable a little bit more user friendly um, especially with packages and see what their default package lists are and I'll also put in how to how you can get um, 5.6 if you install 15.10 at the moment um, I think Kubuntu 16.04 is going to come with 5.6 and then Manjaro um, should be releasing around about that time I think anyway that's my review if you'd like to know anything about this um, please put so in the comments and I'll try to answer as many as I can thanks very much